All right, fig lovers, this is Ross the Fig Boss. In today's video, we're talking about fig trees that are indoors and when exactly we should be moving them outdoors and some of the steps you need to take if you are gonna move your fig tree from indoors to outdoors. We're also gonna talk a little bit about the temperature thresholds that fig trees can withstand in the early spring or in the late winter because we just talked about in the last video, hopefully you guys saw it the other day, we talked about moving potted fig trees out from my winter storage environment out onto the patio into full sun to really start the growing season. And I mentioned in there a bunch of temperature thresholds and we got a lot of questions from people about growing them indoors and also what temperature thresholds they can withstand. So this video is going to hopefully really alleviate some of those questions. And also I want to guide you guys because there's some really critical mistakes you can make if you don't do the right thing at this time of the year specifically on a topic that I'm gonna talk about called sunburn. Yes, fig trees can actually get sunburned just like us as humans. If I were to, let's say I'm in Pennsylvania and I were to go down to Florida and spend the whole day outside, I would get burned really quickly because the, sun, the sunlight intensity closer to the equator is much more intense than it is the further north you are. So it's really important to wear sunscreen down in the south. Um, and I'll say this, that the fig trees are really no different. When we have them inside, indoors, and we bring them outside, well, there's a different intensity of sunlight that happens. Even if you have them in a really sunny window and it gets sunlight all day, it doesn't matter. The light that is being through, that's coming through your window is being diffused and is not very intense at all. So it's really important that if we're gonna move them outside, into your patio or wherever you're gonna have your fig tree this growing season, you wanna make sure you're taking the steps to avoid sunburn. Before I get into all those steps about sunburn, I would highly recommend if you guys are interested, go to my blog, figboss.com, and check out my fig tree sale that's gonna be happening Friday, March 29th at 9 p.m. Eastern. That's when the sale goes live and it's all first come, first serve. So if you want a fig tree this spring, and you want to have one show up at your door, a ship to anywhere in the country, um, check it out. The link will be in the description. Everything's happening on my blog, figboss.com. There's a list of varieties there, prices as well. And uh, I thank you guys for any interest. Let me know if you have any questions with that. So sunburn. One of the things that I think uh, people don't really know about is that if you're going to be adjusting it to the outdoor environment, the outdoor sunlight intensity, you have to take it slow. Uh, most people kind of rush through this thing or they don't do it at all. I get a lot of heartbreaking photos from people that get sunburned on their fig trees and it really either kills, it can kill your fig tree, depending on how fragile it is, or it really sets it back. I mean, you have a special fig, it's been inside, you've been taking care of it, you really, really love it, it's my grandfather's tree, whatever it is, it's really important to make sure you do this properly. Uh, so what you wanna do is you wanna take the fig tree here, and this is a great example as well. This fig tree, by the way, is in my winter storage environment. I have it here for display on purpose because the new growth is very pale. It is like yellow almost. If you look at some of the other fig trees like this one, just starting to leaf out, the, green, the color of the growth is a normal green. But if you have a tree that wakes up, not even just in a sunny window, but like let's say even like in total darkness, in a shed, a garage, your basement, the growth is gonna be super pale like this. And if you have growth like that, it's even more susceptible to sunburn. And you really gotta be careful with the trees like this. And you also don't wanna have a tree, let's say in your basement, if this is the case, where you have excessive amounts of growth that's green and pale and really thin. That's another way to really ruin your fig season. So take my advice that I normally give you guys in the fall, don't put your fig tree in the basement. Let it go dormant outside um, and don't try to grow your fig tree throughout the winter time in a sunny window. Because you can, you can skip this whole sunburn step if you just let it go dormant. This tree right here, which I did let it go dormant, I'm just putting it right there on the patio. I have no concerns about sunburn. But if you want to get through sunburn, you want to do it right, put your fig tree in um, two to three, for two to three days, excuse me, Put it in 100% shade outside, which means no direct sunlight, only indirect light for the entire length of the day. 
I know that can be a little hard and a little challenging at this time where there's no leaves on the trees typically, but that's what you want to do. Then for the next two to three days, you want to put your fig tree in two hours of direct sunlight. The rest of it is indirect. And you just repeat that process every two to three days. So for you go from two hours to four hours to six hours, and then all the way up to however much hours of sunlight you have. If you do that right, you do it slowly enough, you may even want to do four days. Uh, your fig tree will not get sunburned. It will adjust and won't have a problem with any of that. Now, talking about the temperature thresholds here with the fig trees, especially in the late winter, early spring, it's really important that I think if you're new to this, just put it outside after your last frost date. Don't really risk it. Of course, if you have one or two fig trees, it's really easy just to bring it inside, put it out there during the day, bring it in at night. Some of you guys might forget, but um, that's kind of the brainless way of doing it. But if you really wanted to push it like I am and you're, you have them out here five weeks before your average last frost date, well, some of the temperature thresholds you're gonna wanna pay attention to is first and foremost, if the tree is just leafing out, it just has the buds expanding. There's no leaves on the tree just yet. Not even these really small leaves here that you see. Um, my trees have already withstood 25 degrees Fahrenheit. They're budding out, their buds are expanding. The trees are awake, um, but 25 was not enough to damage any of them. And so I think that's really important to consider right there is that what stage is the growth development in? If it's got leaves on it, even something just this small, I mean, the leaves are like baby sized, then you could see a temperature of about 25 to 28 that could damage the, the leaves here. And also the more progressed they are, the more susceptible they are to frost, I found. Um, but you'll notice even in the fall, it's really no different. The trees are awake, they're actively growing, they're big, they're lush, they're beautiful, and then all of a sudden, this nasty frost comes in and just smacks them into dormancy. And that's normal at that time of the year, but we don't want that to happen now. Uh, it's not gonna set them into dormancy, but it will certainly make them, um, it'll set them back. And just like sunburn, it's not something we wanna do, it's something hopefully we can all avoid. So if the leaves are now forming on the trees, my argument is don't let them get hit by a really nasty frost. Even temperatures above 32 degrees Fahrenheit, so temperatures even like let's say 40 or 42 degrees Fahrenheit, you can still see a frost. Now, the warmer it is, typically the, the less severe the frost will be. So I don't really worry about frost um, if it's not very severe. If it's uh, 28 degrees Fahrenheit, or above, I typically here in my climate don't really necessarily pay too much attention to it. 28 is not usually the temperature that's going to really damage and kill everything and the frost is going to be usually very light and by the time the sun comes up in the morning uh, everything just kind of is done and fine. Uh, but if the temperatures again are going to be below that 28, uh, I would expect a much harder frost. The frost is going to be there longer and you're gonna have a problem with that. One of the things we can do is just cover the trees, blankets, tarps, because frost settles. It'll settle on the blanket, it won't settle on the leaves. And so we just then worry about the temperature at that point. And typically the temperature is not really enough to damage the leaves. It's more about the frost and how severe that frost is on the new growth. Um, so those are the things right there as I would pay attention to. Please pay attention to that sunlight and also the temperature tolerances that I mentioned, you know, if your, your trees have not yet leafed out, uh, you can go down to at least 25. Um, if they haven't leafed out at all, you can definitely even go down to 15. Um, I wouldn't push it, especially if the tree is necessarily awake, but uh, then the second you start getting those new growth that comes out and it's just starting to wake up, 25 is something at least that I'm comfortable with. And then when we get up here and the new leaves form, um, I would keep them above 28 at pretty much all times. Anything lower than 28 to 25 is going to be that danger zone if combined with a nasty frost, or even if you have a nasty frost above 28, um, that's enough for me to, to start worrying. So thanks guys for watching. Please hit the subscribe button, hit that like button. And we have a, an article, like I said, on the blog about sunburn and also check out the fig tree sale that I mentioned. See you guys soon. Take care.